Hi there. Welcome back. I don't know what I'm doing. As usual. What what's what's new? What what do I ever When do I ever start a video with I know what I'm doing? The day I do that is the day you should be very, very scared. Like very scared. I got however a really cool suggestion from somebody. It was based on my video entitled uh, Out With The Old, which was not that long ago. Excuse me. I got this little dibbly do of my hair going on. I could wear a hat. If you'd prefer I wear a hat, I can do that, I guess. I don't know. Leave a, leave a like on the video if you want me to wear a hat, I guess. I don't know. I have a couple of options to choose from. We'll try one on and see how it goes. But... <laughs> Back to the video topic, uh, I got a really interesting uh, suggestion from a viewer, which would be really funny if it weren't a viewer suggesting something other than go die in a hole, because it's the internet, you know? So, the, the suggestion was that I should consider following up where I, I walked through, sorry, you know what? We're gonna do this. We're gonna put the, um, we're gonna put the comment right here. Like we're gonna put it on screen right now. So the comment reads, "An interesting watch. Have you considered a follow-up where you walk through narratives on an older D and D campaign you've done to try to show how?" you get those evocations of atmosphere and setting across. Now, if you recall in the last episode, card above, if I remember to do it this time, where I discussed in that video, some ideas and some capabilities of how to describe, or some methods, I suppose, less complicated way to say it. Listen to me being all complicated again. Listen to me back in my prime. I'm not, I am sick. I've had a head cold for five days. Don't worry, we got tested, not COVID. Well, my wife got tested anyway. I got into how to talk about and how to describe to people for stories and things the details that you can find in a leaf, in a walk through the forest, and in, I think it was a cafe table or in a like dining room table kind of thing or like a, a chair side table. Common thoughts to go through your head should look like the veins in the leaf, the leaves across the path, maybe any breaks in a tree line, uh, maybe anything that might be off in the distance of key note, and uh, perhaps color and texture that remind you of memories. Now, when you're running a D&D &D campaign, it can be just a little bit different, right? Because you're live, you're sitting in front of people and you're expected to not really perform, but you're expected to offer some perspective to them in a quick, concise, but moody platform, right? You don't wanna bore people with the details of the texture of the leaves unless the texture of the leaves is important because it can actually throw off your players. And in my experience, 90% of the time, it will throw off your players. If you as a DM, or a GM, if you're playing, you know, Pathfinder or like the Star Wars RPG or some other RPG that you have a little bit of control over, you may find that <laughs> you focus on the wrong detail and eh, it, it, your players kind of take it the wrong direction. And that's, that's totally fine. That's part of the game. Remember, rule one is to have fun. But I do have a memory. I was running my very, f I should not do that with my fist. I was running my very first campaign. I didn't have a name for it. It was a homebrew campaign. I had never DM'd before other than uh, maybe to, uh, I think to a Twitch stream. No, not even then. That was before I was streaming on Twitch. Uh, so that would have been, yikes, six or seven years ago now. Oh, oh, that, mm, that feels weird to say. <laughs> uh, so my first, my first ever time I thought I would do something puzzle heavy. I'm not great at puzzles, so I actually ended up turning to a number of resources online that don't ask me what they were because I don't remember. It was six plus years ago. Um, and my memory doesn't harken back to last week usually. Um, so 
I remember enough to say that we had this puzzle tower, and there were a number of things that I was very unprepared for, like travel times, um, describing what, making it interesting or provoking. I think I accidentally made my my party feel as though there was something supposed to happen between one point and the next by having an awkwardly long pause. Mind you, this was at a period of my life where like I was not sleeping well, and I, I say that as somebody that still does not sleep for very long. I go to sleep at like two in the morning often. But anyway, so the the key moment I want to point out is I had in mind this chamber, and this is one that I came up with myself, and I had some inspiration, but not a ton of direct inspiration. I had an idea to have a chamber in a tower that was delving deeper and deeper from a, a cathedral into the ground, not not into like the 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 catacombs of the the what do you call it the. <laughs> It's not a morgue, but uh, you, you know what I mean? The place where all of the, the church higher-ups were buried, like the saints and stuff like that. Anyway, so below all of that, um, the crypt. Maybe the mausoleum is the better term. That's what I was looking for. Vocabulary is important. <laughs> but anyway, so they got down uh, from this like supposed infinitely spiraling staircase where they actually ended up figuring out they had to go up because they noticed the same sconces, the same scratches on the wall, the same candles, the same decorations over and over again. And so they decided to walk up the stairs and they found themselves in a chamber with a statue. This particular statue was of, I believe it was a horse, like a, uh, a ah, stallion, the most generic term for a horse, <laughs> uh, next to horse, I suppose. Gah! Forgive the sick brain. I probably shouldn't be recording right now, but I'm having way too much fun with it to, like, set it down. So, I had them enter this room, and this room was fairly well lit. Not incredible, but it wasn't dim light. It was circular in shape with stone walls, ceiling, and floor with a single pedestal about two and a half feet high. This is way taller than two and a half feet high. I'm I'm about 5'11", 6 foot-ish. Um, so it's... About that high. Uh, and on top of that, there was a horse uh, rearing up. And I don't think there was a rider on it. I think it was just a horse. Uh, but on the horse, there was... A golden hoof set. The, the horseshoes themselves weren't, but the hooves of the horse were golden. All of them. But there was one that was shinier than the others. Now, I don't remember the exact story that led up to this point. I remember, like, one key point because it was so cringy. It was one of those, like, hey, Stephen, don't ever do that again because that's dumb. Why would you do that? That whole travel mistake. Ah. <laughs> uh. So we get in here and they're, they're looking at these golden hooves and they sit there and they think it's probably a trap. I'm like, you know what? Fair. If it's shiny, it's either direction to go or it's a trap. Okay, that's fair. So they start looking around the room for clues for the direction that they should go. And the clues I gave were like, there are some cracks in the wall. I, I think my description went something along the lines of on a successful perception check. One of my players was running their hands against the wall. This depressed, cracked, split, and, and almost cinder block textured stone began to give way. Cracks followed through the mortar, leading around the room to a central point. They don't seem to go anywhere, but little investigation does leave you to believe that there's a little draft coming through. And that was like all I said. And that obviously sounds like a direction you could go. Turns out, people don't realize that towers are drafty. <laughs> if you didn't know this, castles and, and towers made of stone tend to be quite drafty. They conduct heat fairly well. I'm the only moron that knew that apparently and that's okay that's my bad i should have said it leads to a, uh, the crack leads all the way down to the floor 
So if I were to amend this cracking, following the wall through the cinder block textured, cracking, crumbling stone, I would amend it to a crack seems that as you run your fingers along the wall, you find detail emanating breaking through into your vision. You're observing a cinder block like texture with cracks and crevices that split along the lines of the mortar that's long been worn away. Pieces still remain in the wall, but you can see the dust kind of piling up at the floor. But one place that you don't recognize is a general pattern. It doesn't seem right that there's a crack in the dust. The crack that you follow is in the floor to the statue. It weaves and bobs and, and splits between each of the stones. And you, know, no, you now notice an ever so slight height difference in the tops of the stones. And it's consistent. And it leads underneath the horse statue. Now, this is the kind of detail you would give to something that's above and beyond or something that's a really solid check. If you have a DC, if you haven't seen or if you don't know about D&D, &D, uh, I think I have a video out on it, but that's a long time ago before I was really doing way more research. Um, actually, probably about a year ago. But the, the thing to remember is that a DC or a... Um, Difficulty class, I think is what the acronym is. Uh, DC check um, average is about a 10. Uh, pretty solid, like a, a relatively difficult one is like a 15 and like next to impossible is a 20. And anything above that, it's just like uh, you're killing God. <laughs> like that, that, That's like the, the level that you're getting to. So what do you what do you do? I believe the uh, DC check was like a 12 I had just worked out in my head. It wouldn't have been that hard to see, but it wouldn't have been an easy thing to just off-the-cuff look at. And I think the player rolled a 15. I said, you know what, that's, that's fair enough. Like, if they had rolled a 20, I would have said the crack bobs and weaves and heads down underneath the horse statue where you begin to see just a little flickering flame that doesn't match the flicker of the torches in the room that you're in. Maybe something along the lines of you can see fingerprints along the base of the hoof of the horse. Now, we never got past that session. Uh, there's a whole dramatic story behind me being not ousted from the group, but kind of like left behind so that they could start another campaign, which is really garbage, but water under the bridge. It's not that big of a deal. I understand I was not a great DM. I will say if you're a player in a DM, or if you're a player and you have a newer DM, little bit of grace goes a long way. Um, ask questions and challenge, but in a kind and gentle way. Make sure that you're encouraging the DM as well, because DMing is hard. It's difficult. And storytelling, let me tell you, storytelling is mind-blowingly difficult. Anybody that's tried to write a book and has not succeeded understands that writing a book is not easy. Writing a novel is not easy. Writing a piece of work that helps paint a picture in somebody's mind is incredibly difficult because so many people think so differently. So help your DM out, ask questions and challenge, but be nice about it and, and talk to them when you think that they might be struggling through something because a little bit of communication goes a long way instead of just going behind their back and starting up a different campaign without them. Just be cool, you know? So to address that original comment, how, how do you walk through, an, or what narratives do I have from an older D&D campaign that I've run that helped get those across? Well, I've given you an example of what didn't work. Let me give you an example of what did work. About a year later, I think it was about a year later, I started up a campaign with uh, my wife, my boss at the time, because uh, I had switched jobs. I started a campaign a while afterward, about a year later, called Out of the Abyss. And I'm not sponsored by Wizards of the Coast. I am just telling you, I started this campaign and I deviated heavily. I took what Out of the Abyss painted and I painted it differently. I painted it in a way that fit how I DM'd because the, the book does a great job of allowing new DMs start but I didn't know how to read a DM book. I had read a couple and they always have that how to read this book. And it reminds me of a textbook. And it just, 
uh, I was studying enough as it was, or I had studied enough as it was. What I really wanted to do was just have fun with it and be creative. And there's nothing wrong with that. However, you have to be prepared for pitfalls, DM pitfalls, storyteller pitfalls, continuity errors, continuity errors. See if I have the editing chops to make that fill that gap. I bet you I don't. Stay tuned. <laughs> uh, so I was having a hard time following along with what I was supposed to tell the players and what I wasn't supposed to. I knew that certain boxes, if you don't know this, uh, DM books uh, have little blocks uh, in it that say, tell your players this part. It's key to the story um, for if they've gone down this path or this path or something along those lines. And I was dancing around it and not realizing in my Neanderthalic brain that I was supposed to be reading key points. So it very quickly deviated. And also, I, I've put pressure on myself to rush through the story rather than taking my time and saying, let me, let me move on to the next page and we'll get there, okay? Uh, pace yourself. It's a lot of work to read all the information and players can deviate completely from it. And that's okay, but it's something to be prepared for. In the story, be prepared for that. However... They had escaped their imprisonment. Do I remember if there's a true imprisonment? Yes, I do. There is a whole few pages. I think there's five pages on being imprisoned in the beginning of Out of the Abyss. And essentially a cell break or a jail break in the Underdark. In a complex series of tunnels run by Drow. All right. If you don't know what Drow are, they're Dark Elves kind of thing. It, it's a whole deal read about them sometime. It's actually quite interesting. But anyway, so they had escaped and they entered into this large cavern. Now, I, I had been describing the ambient room feel, the, the look and texture and nature of other cellmates that were not themselves based on some things in the book. But my first piece of ambient artwork to drive forward to these uh, individuals, if I remember correctly, was the exit a tunnel lit by torches and uh, the few mushrooms that could be found that were luminescent throughout the caves, which were not many because most luminescent mushrooms don't do so well even in torchlight. You enter this cavern that is monumental, stories and stories and stories high. Ever, ever taller than you could ever imagine. At the very, very top, you see stalagmites. Uh, stalactites? Stalagmites? The ones that come from the ceiling. I don't have it off the top of my brain, but I, I know one is one way. The other is the other way. Excuse me, I am still sick. As I said, like three times in the video so far. Anyway, the stone... Formations that were dripping down from the sediment, or that had dripping coming from the sediment, created an almost rain and mist in the room. The cavern is huge in circumference, circular or octagonal. You can't quite tell with the scale of this room, but the walls don't seem quite flat. It's rugged and, and dug stone, seemingly hand carved by fingernails and tools over hundreds of thousands of years. The mushrooms and crystals around are bio and mineral luminescent, forcing the light into your eyes, but ever so gently, a green glow, unwavering, purely constant, illuminates the fog that hangs just above your heads. To your left, a path climbs the spiral set room. Below, underneath the ceiling drippings is a pool of murky, dark, filthy water. You hear a chittering, just an ever so slight chittering, like exoskeletons clashing, brushing, scraping. You don't dare ask where it's coming from. You don't dare stick around. To your right, a doorway, much like the one you exited. A tunnel 
with torchlight. The staircase seems to lead to three large formations hanging from the ceiling that you can't quite see over. But you see different light, much like torchlight, but maybe not torchlight, hanging at the ceiling above. The fog isn't thick enough to obscure your vision too badly, but it's enough to rob you of the details that you would otherwise see. Did that paint a picture for you? It's hard to say. It might for you. It did for me because I'm envisioning it, and I am pulling from memory because I didn't read that thing again. But I remember what the room looked like because I painted that picture in my own head, and I provided that to them. Now, there's a story that is still uh, not recounted, but regarded, I guess, uh, hearkened back to by the players of that campaign. Um, my sister was there as well, and her husband. Uh, and every once in a while, a side comment is made to me. Yeah, maybe I'll just get a pet spider. Because I granted my, my former boss, my buddy Steve, <laughs> I granted him a familiar because he rolled a nat 20 to entice the spider to be his pet. And it's a giant spider. Like, it's a huge spider. It was great. Um, so I had to quickly scribble down a stat block for that which was my first time quickly scribbling down a stat block for a monster most of the time i just went to like roll 20 or something so that's an example of when i did get that evocation the atmosphere and setting across to them because they still remember pieces of that they still remember uh the the bioluminescent mushrooms and the mineral luminescent crystals they remember the spider obviously because it's a funny moment um, and there were a number of other aspects that we keep to ourselves as a group because they were our memories to have. The beauty of a, a, an interactive story like D&D or Pathfinder or any tabletop RPG is the stories that you're writing together, ones that you can recount with one another. It's, it's a lot of fun, and a lot of people still consider it nerdy. I still consider it nerdy, but you know what? It's no more nerdy than video games are, at least not in my book. I have a lot more fun with it. It's engaging with people, and it's almost always a great time. Good, bad, and ugly, it's almost always a great time. I have a couple of other stories, but not a ton. I haven't DM'd that much in my career as a DM. Uh, uh, in fact, right now I'm running through a campaign. I am a player in a campaign, but my next campaign that I'll be running is Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. And I'm stoked. Uh, honestly, like I, I'm, I'm really stoked about some of the stuff that's coming up in this book, and I, I don't want to get into detail, because I don't want to spoil anything, especially if you haven't played through it or seen it or anything like that. I'm really stoked because this is exactly the kind of story I like to tell. It's doom and gloom through most of it. It's tiring. It's exhausting. It's environmental, and it's all about setting. And the players write the story. I'm stoked. If you have questions, as always, leave them in the comments. I'm here to answer those questions. If you are looking for advice, ask away. I'm, I'm here to answer questions. If you're curious about how to start DMing or how to start telling stories uh, from a narrative standpoint, I think I'll get into that in the next one of these videos, but I'll try to keep that straight in my head. Um, if you like this, Hit the like button on the video. It, it tells me that you like the content, you want to see more of it, so I can keep making content that I'm enjoying, but so that you can continue to watch stuff that you enjoy. If you really liked it, and you're not already, hit the subscribe button. It's just one little red button that you click and it turns gray. If you want to know every time I upload a video, hit the little bell and hit all notifications. And if the YouTube gods bless you, you'll get the notifications when I throw up a video. Anyway. Thanks so much for watching this, and until next time, have a good one.